Hey folks, Ray from DCAmerica.com here. Take with the new GoPro Hero 7 Black. And I've got 16 things that are new about the new Hero 7 Black. A lot of it kind of under the covers, under the hood, technical cool stuff. Uh, so this is definitely not like a marketing fluff video at all. I'm going to tell you the good and the bad about some of the new features on the Hero 7 Black. Um, now, of course, there is the obvious, and this won't even count as six, one of the 16 items it's actually black. So unlike the Hero 6 black and the Hero 5 black and all the previous other Hero blacks that weren't actually black, this one is legit black, the color of the unit itself. Um, also, as a freebie, uh, it says Hero 7 black on the outer shell of the frame as well as on the unit itself, which is something that, again, in the past it had like tiny little letters, but now, now you know. It's, it's clear you've got the 7 black. So what's number one on the list? It is a new hyper smooth feature. Um, what that is is basically taking their existing stabilization and kicking it up a notch. Now, GoPro calls it like gimbal like and stuff like that that's probably pushing it a little bit um, but it is a heck of a lot better so you can see side by side here here a six black with image stabilization on uh, versus here a seven black image stabilization on these are on equivalent settings of 4k 30 just so you can kind of see what things would look like uh, mountain biking down you know some pretty bumpy trails and stuff at pretty fast speeds and things are looking a lot better again not gimbal like but a lot better which brings us right to number two which is the ability to now stabilize 4k 60 footage uh, so in the past you were limited to to 4k 30 uh, which was fine for most people when you get into action sports so you want the additional frame rates if you can uh, so you can see right here this is now 4k 60 stabilized footage and i'm comparing it to 4k 60 non-stabilized footage of the hero 6 black just so you can see the differences there um, and it's quite a bit and a lot of this entire hyper smooth thing gets into how they're doing it uh, so they've loaded an extra gig of ram into the hero 7 black and with that they're trying to do a predictive scene analysis so they're looking at the scene as it's happening in real time and they're trying to figure out where you're going next uh, based on the accelerometer data, the GPS data of this, and then they're going to try to go ahead and correct for that somewhat in advance, versus in the past they're saying they went ahead and they just did, did it all kind of retroactively, um, so as you hit the, that moment of that bump, it would retroactively apply that correction, uh, and it seems to be making a difference. I mean, again, it's not gimbal-like, I wouldn't go that far, but it's definitely better. And that gets to number three on the list, which is there are actually secretly three stabilization options. Uh, and this won't be super obvious because what it's going to do behind the scenes is just automatically choose the best one. Uh, so the number one is effectively the new hyper smooth, and that's you know going to go ahead and kind of compensate for things in advance, and that's all great and dandy. Number two is the existing electronic image stabilization they've been doing in the past, uh, and that's been not bad. And the reason why you have that is there are some resolution modes, uh, some of the 4x3 modes in particular, that do not support the new hyper smooth mode. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind. And then the third mode is off. So if for some reason you don't want stabilization on or it's conflicting with something else, then you go ahead and simply turn that off as well. So the number four on the list is the new time warp feature, uh, which the rest of the world just calls hyperlapse. Uh, and what that does is that takes basically kind of the whole time lapse idea of the past and it stabilizes and makes it super smooth. Uh, so if we looked at the way GoPro did time lapse uh, videos or photos in the past, is they were simply just photos. So if you actually watched a screen on a GoPro here or anything before this from a time lapse video standpoint, it was just taking photos at certain intervals. So at half second intervals, it would take a photo. And now the problem with that, if you were just walking down the street, is that your camera will kind of like tilt like this a little bit, and that's really noticeable when you put these those together in a time lapse video because there's no stabilization applied. Whereas with the new time warp feature, it's actually taking video and then processing that based on the accelerometer data in this uh, to determine how to level out that camera and it looks really smooth. You're seeing right now some of that footage I've taken uh, while hiking and while cycling. And now to compare side by side, here's what time-lapse video would look like on a Hero 6 Black side by side with a Hero 7 Black with a new time warp feature. From a setting standpoint, you can choose different speeds. Uh, so you can basically choose these speeds that will tell you how much it's going to speed up the imagery. Now, it's not quite precisely a constant. Uh, in fact, it'll go ahead and adjust the speed rate a little bit based on what you're doing. So if I go ahead and stop in front of something, it'll adjust the speed and realize that you wanted to show whatever it was that you stopped for a second before it continues on again. Now, of course, what you may have just noticed in the last few items brings us to our next one, which is an entirely new user interface. Uh, the back of the screen itself is now totally changed. It's a, it's a whole different interface. It looks a lot different, and it frankly looks a lot better. Um, it's a lot easier to use. GoPro said what they're trying to do is trying to simplify some of the modes and so that people don't get kind of lost in some of the options, and I think they've accomplished that. Things are basically down to kind of like three core options. You have video, you have photos, and you have time lapse. And within that, you can still access all the modes and all the past stuff that you've had, but they're just displayed a little bit easier. 
Next on the list is the new portrait mode. Uh, that allows you to take your GoPro in an orientation like this, so it's sideways, if you will, uh, and shoot portrait mode style video, uh, just like you might shoot on your phone or uh, for apps like you know Instagram or Snapchat. Um, it's all now oriented vertically. Uh, now, as part of that, you'll see that the menu on the front changes to vertical orientation, the menu on the back changes to the vertical orientation, so everything all aligns there, uh, and it shoots that just fine. Now, you can debate whether or not you like portrait mode or don't like portrait mode, but there's no debating that it's not a bad thing to have it in the camera for folks that do want to use it. Next on the list is a feature appealing to probably a little bit of that same market as portrait mode, which is new timed clips. Uh, the idea that you can set your GoPro to take time clips in certain durations automatically. For example, 30 second duration, where when you press this record button, it's going to record for 30 seconds and then it'll shut off. Uh, and there's kind of two trains of thought with that when I talk to GoPro about it. Um, one is they want it to be easier so folks don't have like these massive clips that are, you know, 10, 20 minutes long when there's really only 30 seconds of action. Uh, Two, it makes it easier for their quick software to figure out where the actual action is in the clips. And if it has to sort through, you know, 20 minute video files, that takes a long time and it's more likely to get it wrong versus with the 30 second clips, it kind of like forces you to put that action in 30 seconds and to kind of focus on getting the best shot that you can in that time frame as opposed to gigantic video files. When it's doing these time clips, it'll actually show a red banner around the outside of the camera, uh, basically kind of like a little timer as to how much time you have left. Speaking of timers, there is finally a flipping photo timer on this. Uh, so you can now go ahead and set a countdown timer when you, when you want to take a photo. So you can just put it on a rock, stand in front of it, and actually just get a normal timer like, you know, every camera's had for, I don't know, four decades or something. Um, so that's awesome because I know for myself, I'm taking like uh, pictures of myself where I may not be able to touch the camera and the voice control doesn't work as well. I usually just shoot like time-lapse photos. Uh, so this is a lot better just to be able to give a certain time and then do what I want within the frame based on that timing. Next is a new super photo mode. Now that's a little bit of a mark marketing buzz speak, but essentially means they won't screw up your photos anymore. Um, so you may remember in the past you had the HDR mode, and that was great for something like this forest where I could take the camera, put it down, and it would correctly kind of balance out the um, overexposed areas and the underexposed areas. But it wasn't so great when you were actually moving fast. A lot of times it would kind of result in this ghosting artifact in your photos. It wasn't ideal. So what they're doing with the new super photo mode is a kind of couple things. One, they're looking at the accelerometer data in this and seeing what you're actually doing when you're taking the photo. So if you're doing something super fast moving or the camera's moving a lot, um, they're not necessarily going to use those multi-frame blended sort of techniques. Uh, instead, they're going to go towards tone mapping. So essentially, they're doing a bunch more work on the analytic side of your photo to hopefully get kind of the best photo possible. Um, so far, in my photo taking with this over the last few days and some different scenery around here, it's been producing pretty spot on photos. Like whether it be fast moving or not fast moving, they've been pretty nice. So, so far so good. Next is a biggie, which is improved audio. Um, of course, not everyone knows that the, the Hero cameras in general haven't really had the best audio, but in the last couple generations, the Hero 5 and the Hero 6, there's been this weird like rattling tunnel wind noisy sort of sound that goes on, especially when you have it, or primarily when you have it in a case like this. Um, and if there's anything rubbing on the side of the camera, um, I was excited about my rubbing. Uh, there were so many times where I had to throw away that entire clip because the audio was totally useless. Uh, so what they've done, they've changed the membrane above the microphones and all of the microphones on the unit itself. And they said as part of doing that, they've eliminated that whole like weird wind tunnel distortion sound. So far, my testing, pretty good. I put together an entire video up there in the corner on just this. Um, I've been trying to test it in all sorts of conditions, like super, super windy conditions, fast moving conditions on trails, uh, just like rubbing it a bunch, as weird as that may sound, to see how it worked. Um, but so far over the last week, I haven't had any suck days yet from an audio standpoint on the Hero 7. Next, we have a change for Apple users in particular. Within the new Hero 7, they are now MFI compatible, um, which means they are made for iOS. Uh, and that's a bit of a chipset change they've done that goes ahead and allows for much faster pairing to an iOS device. And I've definitely seen that without question. Uh, the thing just like cleanly works with my phone now. It's not like this kind of jumble back and forth sometimes between different Wi-Fi networks and stuff. Like I just bring it to the phone, it works. The pairing process was dead simple. It was almost like Apple simple. Um, so that's kind of a nice change for Android users. Sorry, same, same. Now, whether you're an Apple or Android, um, you will be able to take advantage of the next feature, which is new live streaming. Uh, so you can now live stream direct from the camera uh, straight to the interwebs, albeit via your cell phone or via a Wi-Fi network. It does have to have access to some sort of Wi-Fi or cellular network. There's not cellular chip in this directly. Um, so you essentially have two options. One is to go ahead and have it with your phone, paired to your phone, uh, not on a Wi-Fi network, just paired directly from this via Wi-Fi to your phone. Uh, and then from there, it'll use your cellular networks out 
outbound out to the internet. The second option is to connect to a normal Wi-Fi network where your phone is not involved at all. Um, so you can literally take your phone, throw it away, and have just GoPro to Wi-Fi network. Once you've got that all set up, you can go ahead and broadcast straight to Facebook Live as well as to other platforms uh, via using a URL that you have. Uh, so that's kind of two different options. For example, you could pipe that out through YouTube or, or really whatever you want at that point in time. The only downside here is this is limited to 720p. P. Um, and not a very good 720p either, by the way. Uh, the stuff that I've seen so far is a fairly pixelized 720p. I asked GoPro, like, is there any hope for 1080p? And they were kind of like, eh, maybe, but probably not really. Um, uh, honestly, like, come on, GoPro. This is 2018. We're talking like 4K live streaming these days, not 720p. One note is that HyperSmooth is actually included in the 720p streams. Uh, so you can go ahead and you'll get that data there. Also, they are recording a 1080p copy on the side as well as a clean copy that's not over cellular network so that you have that on your camera itself for later on uh, retrieval or whatnot. Next on the list is a minor note about some new resolutions added. Nothing super exciting for most people, like there's no 4K 120 or anything like that. Um, I'll just put these new resolutions on the screen right now. Um, also, as part of that, the default setting now is 4x3. Uh, so it's 1440 4x3, which everyone watching this video probably just groaned. I don't know what to say. Really? 4x3? That's just... Come on. Um, oh well. Next on the list is actually the same GoPro GP1 chips that they introduced in the Hero 6 Black. Uh, there's been no changes to that. It's the exact same image sensor and chipset there that they added. Uh, they made a big deal last year. Uh, the main difference so here is the additional one gig of RAM to the unit itself, which allows them to go ahead and make a lot of these additional features that we're seeing on the Hero 7 Black itself. They did go ahead and update Karma. Uh, not just the Karma Grip, the gimbal, uh, but also the Karma Drone. Uh, so both of those products that have updates to make it compatible with the Hero 7 Black and to take advantage of the new features where applicable. Uh, some of the new features aren't applicable on the drone, of course, and stuff like that. Uh, but it is nice that at least for the six people still flying the GoPro Karma drone, uh, you do have firmware out there now that will update and be fully compatible with this camera. Finally, last on the list are some improvements to the GoPro app itself. Uh, now, not the quick app, but the actual kind of main GoPro app. You can now do overlays of all of your uh, telemetry metrics, so things like speed and mapping, all that kind of stuff, directly in the GoPro app and put that right on your videos without having to use a desktop computer. Uh, so that's super super handy and it's nice to see GoPro finally like years later integrating that acquisition they made um, of Dashware into the mobile app itself uh, and that's pretty cool and if you want more detail than I could ever include in this video definitely check out the full in its review linked in the description there I've got more sample footage more sample photos things you can download uh, lots of goodness in that as well okay so there you go a look at the new Hero 7 Black you know so far after using it for about a week now I'd say it's pretty solid I haven't had any bad imagery any bad photos like ghosting or anything like that I've had totally usable audio on my video which is solid uh, and I've also had just totally stable usable video when it comes to mountain biking and stuff like that that are definitely bumpy sports so so far so good yeah it doesn't necessarily have like some of the big things that people want like there is no 4k 60 linear mode for example um, or even like some higher resolution 4k stuff but I think they also focus on some of the more basic things that a lot of people have been asking for um, even if you didn't necessarily even know you were asking for it uh, so for things like the timer mode for photos like I didn't ask about that directly but I wished I had it. I just didn't know to ask for it. And now that I have it, that makes a whole hell of a lot of sense. So the Hero 7 Black is $3.99. It'll start shipping about a week from now. Uh, there's also the Hero 7 uh, White and Silver as well, but I don't have those units yet, so I can't give you a, a full comparison. Uh, those units, as a minor note, though, are not using the GoPro GP1 chip. Anyways, if you found this interesting, whack that like button at the bottom there, as well as the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Have a good one.